After a rough May, the New York Mets, they're playing some good baseball in June. The Amazons recorded a 2-1 to win on Friday night in their series opener with the Padres in Flushing. So let's talk some Metropolitan Baseball. We're going to do that with Mets content creator Tyler Ward, who joins me now. Wardy, what's going on? How's it going, Dexter? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing. I feel like I'm doing good. The Mets are doing a lot better. Nine and four this month. Got to be happy about that. Well, nine out of the last thirteen games. So Mets fans have been a little bit positive, and they got a bit healthier this week, Wardy, as Edwin Diaz and Francisco Alvarez they came off the injured list. Diaz, he's pitched in back-to-back -back games since coming off the aisle on Thursday. What do you make of how he's looked in his return? It's hard to not be giddy about Edwin Diaz. I got to be Frank Dexter. I mean, we all see with our very eyes. This man was put on the 15-day IL with a shoulder impingement. Prior to that, he was struggling mightily, not only with his performance on the mound, blowing save situations multiple times left and right, but also a lack of confidence that we've seen with Edwin many times in the past. But thankfully, he has overcome those hurdles, and I think he has done that again on the mental front once again here. We've seen him pitch in back-to-back -back games. One of them, of course, was in a non-save situation in a one-run ball game for the Mets that they ended up winning. And then we saw last night at the time of us recording this one, Edwin Sugar Diaz getting the save back-to-back -back nights. His first First save in 39 days, fitting for Mr. 39. And not only that fantastic slider that's sitting more 91 and 93 than the high 80s that has so much late bite to it, that has been beyond deceptive to those righty righty batters who are down and in there to those lefty batters not named Jerks and Profar. And that fastball touching 100, I know that a triple digits doesn't mean everything for a bullpen, but when it comes to Edwin Diaz and his game as a $100 million man, it certainly helps a little bit. So to see him paint the bottom left corner on Manny Machado to get him looking a true 100 mile per hour pitch something he hasn't thrown in quite some time here we're talking the last time Edwin Diaz was doing this in this Mets bullpen was a very very long time ago so awesome stuff to see at City Field there in Flushing and hopefully for Edwin's case in the Mets it continues yeah Mets fans hoping that it continues and you're right there Wardy the velocity going up and seeing that consistency with it is something to watch with him going forward now JD Martinez wants to talk to you about him because He's been delivering some big hits lately, including his first career walk-off home run this week. Is the D8 starting to find his stride in a Mets uniform, and how important is he to this lineup producing on a consistent basis? Oh, I mean, to say he's important is quite the understatement, right? J.D. Martinez, you know, Dexter, I would definitely love to hear your thoughts about this, too, because personally, as a Mets fan, I have been a huge admirer of J.D.'s game, going back to not only his time there, little stint in Detroit, of course, he was in Arizona for a little bit, Boston, where he won his World Series back in 2018, L.A. last year, everywhere that J.D.M. has went, he has been a true hitting savant, and for the Mets to get him late right before the season began on that four mil on that million dollar deal or so where they're eating multiple millions after the fact and then to see jd producing the way they has been this season has been vital it's taken the mets around three seasons to finally get some consistency at the universal dh position but they have finally found that here in jd martinez between his fantastic you know uh tying hit that we saw there against the philadelphia phillies in london to him walking off for the first time in his career, funny enough, having a home run to walk off a game. You know, he quite literally didn't know what to do with his hands or his reaction afterwards because it's never happened, he said, which I thought was very cool. And then to see him lead the way for the Mets again, along with Edwin Diaz last night, with a two-out, two-run opposite field double, that just shows you the professionalism that is J.D. Martinez, the future Hall of Famer. And it was fantastic to see him produce the way that he has been right now, currently setting six home runs, 23 RBIs, and the sub-800 OPS on the season, especially with guys like Pete Alonso faltering in the lineup lately the way that he has been in a contract year with a lot of pressure. It's all that much more imperative that you have a productive DH there right behind him, that being J.D. Martinez. I think, you know, you asked me for my thoughts, Wardy, and I think the thing about Martinez when you look at him is the professionalism, right? Use that word, professional, professional hitter. And I think when you have those guys in the lineup, to your point, when people are struggling, that absolutely can help because there's a guy you could count on to be a professional hitter. Might not always get the hit, but you know he's going to have quality at bats, and that's what we've seen thus far with J.D. Martinez. So it'll be very interesting to see with him and the Mets if they continue to play well. Do they keep him? Would he be somebody that could be on the trading block? But hopefully we're not talking about trading block yet because Mets fans are hoping that he continues to hit well and get some big hits. Now, last thing for me, Wardy, got to ask you about this. And this is all about the vibes around this team because this Mets team heading into play on Saturday, 31 and 37, six games below 500. You know this. Some of the fan base, they lost faith 
after the losses were beginning to pile up last month. Where are you personally in terms of your belief in this team staying in the wild card hunt as we approach the All Star break? Are you encouraged by the start here in June, or do you need to see more with this Mets team? Definitely encouraged by the start here in June. It's great to see the Mets have an above 500 record throughout the stretch this point, but I would be lying if I said that I'm beyond encouraged with the type of production that's led to these victories. You know, I need to see consistency from this Mets team, something that they've struggled with oh so mightily all season long. I want to see this offense have some unison of course they've been one of the better offenses in all baseball over the past couple of weeks but when it comes to playing at home and at city field we need to get rid of this dark cloud it feels like every single time every single year the mets are there they just have more struggles more often than not they're playing at home and naturally when you have essentially home field or home court whatever you'd like to label it you'd like to have some type of advantage with having a strong fan base but for the mets they still struggle to hit the way they want to hit at city field i want to see this rotation of course how more depth have they been because while we've gotten some solid starts no one knows how to go beyond five innings so i would say my thought process right now on the mets still staying in the hunt for the wild card is very much so true i don't think that's really wavering anytime soon i think the mets will be in the hunt for the wild card for a good period of time but to suggest that say oh they're 1000 percent going to go on a run here and lock in that wild card spot you know post trade deadline i think again we are getting ahead of ourselves just a bit Mets still sit again six games below 500 currently stand three games out of a playoff spot in which that's been the case for how many weeks now it kind of feels like like in that regard so for the Mets they just need to continue to take this day by day and I think that's how a lot of fans are going to continue to take this team including myself yeah take it day by day series by series and see if the Mets can start to get back to 500 it feels like that should be the first goal for the team and then maybe you can start thinking about the playoffs but Wardy I like it a little, a little bit cautious optimism is what I'll say yes. with you right now about this June start. A little cautious optimism here around the Mets. We'll see if the Mets can get closer to that goal of getting back to 500. That is Tyler Ward, great Mets content creator. Always a pleasure talking with you, sir. And we will talk again soon. Hopefully next time we talk, the Mets are above 500. I'm hoping for that. Yes, fingers crossed, Dexter. Thank you so much again for having me on. Always Any, a pleasure. Anytime, my guy. Thank you.